Hello, it's Joyful Hermit. I just returned from Mass and a little errand running. Plus, had um, visited my daughter, son-in-law, and a grandson. Went to a speed skating event with the grandson. It was very noisy, very crowded. I was in lots of pain. I'd spent the night with them the night before after doing a great deal of manual labor here. So, um, anyway, hermits can have children and grandchildren. Um, and even some are married, but I believe that um, the married ones do take vows of, or, you know, keep their vows of chastity and agree to not um, have sexual relations. But I suppose that all is under the purview of their bishop or their spiritual directors. Um, I don't know if there are any canonically approved married hermits, but there were married hermits in the history of the church, and there are married hermits now. Um, I think of the, um, yeah, I think uh, oftentimes maybe one is the hermit and the other is not, but has agreed to allow the spouse. I know of one in Germany who has that status. I think his spiritual director is a Franciscan monk, and um, he's privately professed. But um, <clears throat> my family is not Catholic, um, so I really don't get into discussion of my vocation with them particularly. I think they know, or at this phase of, of it, God has so guided my life and my vocation by in, in circumstances that um, it just isn't necessary to come up as part of discussion because I live a life that is uh, very, very uh, removed from the world and uh, physically and in my activities. Uh, I have... Uh, an abundance of solitude, and I have a few friends, not not in this area, and I haven't really had the time or the means to develop relationships in this area, and I see that that is by God's design. Um, I am just so busy trying to survive in here, and have, and the people that I have hired to help me in this particular vicinity, which is which is in itself very remote, um, very rural, very removed, is um, those people have not been good workers. So and um, so there hasn't been any connection, um, other than until recently, maybe in the last three weeks, a. Uh, a God literally sent these two men, Raphael and Mark. Um, Raphael is, does roofs and things like that and has a crew and a very nice man, very hardworking and very fair-priced. And um, Mark is an electrician. Ironically, both men are Catholic but neither, uh, I think Raphael says he goes to church on occasion, but his wife is very religious, very devout Catholic. And Mark has not been to Mass for years and years. So, and we've had interesting discussions about that. But anyway, so that, that's that been a very um, interesting development um, in my life to have some help. I didn't have the finances but I have an, a, a very, very elderly aunt who has made me a loan, a no interest, no payment loan for 10 years. God be pleased, and I would be pleased and blessed if my aunt would outlive me. <laughs> um, she's in excellent condition, nearly 91 years old. And not Catholic either. My, like I say, my relatives are not. So there's a little bit of background about how uh, my hermit life is as far as family relationships. And um, being a grandmother 
And my grandson has sort of been indoctrinated with some anti-Catholic notions, and I'm not sure where he got them from, but um, maybe from his Sunday school or something, I'm not sure. A little bit of the idea of thinking that Catholics aren't Christians, but I've tried to talk to him about that and clarify, and at least he realizes that his Gaga is a Christian, <laughs> even though she's a Catholic. Um, I also was, well, I've been doing a little more reading of St. Godric. I think I'll talk about him another time. But I'm just on a chapter now in which uh, his family came to see him after many years of being away from, from him. Um, and partly that was just due to the times and the locale in England and the lack of communication means um, they would just hear rumors that he was alive. And they really didn't know. And finally, they heard enough rumors that he was located in the Durham area. And they knew that he had always had a great devotion to St. Cuthbert, who was a hermit um, for a time being. St. Cuthbert was. So they figured the rumors of Godric being in the area where St. Cuthbert's um, grave was, tomb, that maybe Godric truly was there. So they did quite a journey. His mother and a brother and a sister came to uh, see Godric, and he was very pleased to see them. And they ended up living near him until they died. His sister became a hermit under his tutelage and had a hermitage uh, near his hermit. Hermitage. So, um, anyway, she obviously wasn't canonically approved. She was privately professed, as I believe in that time period. I think all of them probably were. Um, and Godric wasn't even affiliated. He was never affiliated with a uh, an abbey or a monastery until toward the end of his life, the monks, the abbot of Durham, made him a an associate, what we would today call an associate, because they, uh, they would send a priest over once a week to celebrate Mass. And as he became um, ill in the last 10 years of his life, from age 96 to 106, something like that, or 95 to 105, they tended him out of charity. And also the abbot or priest off and on would act as his spiritual guide because he was quite austere and very anti-people. He, he was guarding his hermit life to an extreme at first until finally uh, a monk was able to explain to him that that was not necessary nor was it um, in the virtue of charity to be that way. So that's when he wisely realized that he could um, benefit by some counseling some spiritual guidance um, but um, so he did I think the abbot at that time and then later on a priest Reginald so um, and also um, he fasted but not ex not he, he backed off of the extreme fasting that he had started at first he had he had himself some extreme ideas of the hermit life that probably came from observation or in his own mind of, you know, having heard maybe rumors of how hermits were to be or to not to be. But I was also, somebody had mentioned to me about um, uh, how thin, how thin I am. And um, it got me to thinking, I don't, I don't really fast. I tend not to eat much meat. A lot of it is financial. And then many years ago, when my son was little and, and living with me and my daughters were in college, just financially, uh, um, I had to cut back. I would get him meat because he was a growing boy. But um, we also then heard a priest from India um, asking for help <coughs> for educating seminarians <coughs> and explained that 50 cents a day would help educate a seminarian. So my son and I, he was maybe 12 or 13 at the time, gave up pop. We didn't get it very often anyway. But we gave that up and we gave up other treats 
candy or eating out at Burger King. <coughs> Excuse me. And we had a little jar. And we put the money we saved in that and we would donate it each month. And we actually ended up putting through three seminarians in India. Two of them are now priests. One dropped out of seminary. So, but I think we... I think he finished seminary or just about. So um, that got me in the mode of not eating meat. And um, I did fast when I first became Catholic on Wednesdays and Fridays. But I physically could not do it because of my pain level, uh, my physical pain level. And at the time, this elderly priest who was guiding me, very dear and holy man, uh, said, I had no business looking for suffering, that the Lord gave me more than enough out of his choosing and allowing. And in my life's time, that has been very, very true. If not physical suffering all the time, there have been also um, persecutions and um, other relational sufferings. The Lord would strip me back from getting too involved in the world. And sometimes that would lead to some sufferings or misunderstandings with other people. So, um, but I don't think, um, I think probably as a rule, most hermits are probably not heavy people. Um, the Just the arduous nature of the hermit life and the focus is um, has probably a lot of manual labor, I think. Um, if, or if one is ill, there usually is not a tendency to be heavy when you're ill. Um, at least for most people, pain um, depletes the appetite. And otherwise, I think it's also a rather disciplined life of not doing, not not eating in excess. And um, there's just no need to have extra weight um, for whatever reasons. I think I think hermits do watch what they eat, grow their own food often enough. At least I do. I tend to grow as much as I can and um, live off the land as best I can also. Anyway, just some thoughts. Godric... Um, from old sketches, he was a thin person, and um, just lived lean, lived lean. And also, um, there's another aspect to it, is that hermits generally like to gift anyone who comes to the hermitage. And um, I tend tended, I, I don't have a kitchen this year, but in the past, I would tend to gift people with meals or with baked goods that they would take or anything that I had canned or made or um, send them home with some gift of food. So um, anyway, just some thoughts. Beautiful, beautiful Mass. Very, very deep state during Mass. And this parish I'm in now, it's... Um, Every Mass has been very beautiful, very spiritual, very rich. Um, not out of sorts with obedience to the Church. And deeply spiritual homilies. And um, so the Lord has brought me to a good place in that regard. And I praise Him for it. God bless His real presence in all of us.